Shalom Yasharala, this is your brother Manatazak of Nation of Kings and Priests. All praises to Yahweh in the name of Hamashiach Yahawashai, our King, our Savior, our big brother. So today, in this Bible bite, we're going to go into the book of Jeremiah in chapter 25. And we're going to look at the, the judgments that were upon Judah and the nations. Because we know that all throughout history, our people have received many judgments doing to many times we've been into captivity because of our stiff neckness our hard heartedness but also the most high doesn't leave the nations that put us in captivity unpunished they also get punished so we're going to look at a little bible bite a small example of this and we're going to go into jeremiah 25 we're going to go through the whole chapter we're going to jump around a couple of things here and there a little precepts here and there and we're just going to go through the story and, you know, see if we get edified from this. So Jeremiah chapter 25, starting at verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. That was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. The which Jeremiah the prophet spake unto all the people of Judah. And to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, From the thirteenth year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, the king of Judah, even unto this day, that is, the three and twentieth year, the word of the Lord have come unto me, and I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye have not hearkened. This sounds familiar, rising early and speaking, but ye have not hearkened. This is the work that the brothers are doing on the highways and byways. This is the work that the brothers are doing when they're out there preaching and talking to you and inviting you to a conversation. But we, you know, you guys are not hearkening. You guys are not listening. But this is not new for our people. So let's look at this because it's happening even in this time with Jeremiah when Judah was around. So that was verse three. Let's, um, in fact, I think I have a precept for verse 3. Let's go to Deuteronomy, right? 28, verse 15. Let's see here. Deuteronomy 28, 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So we see that this is nothing new because Moses warned us of situations like this about us hearkening and listening. And here we have Jeremiah saying the same thing. So we're going to reread verse 3. From the 13th year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even unto this day, this that that is the three and twentieth year, the word of the Lord have come unto me, and I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye have not hearkened. So we see we have a pattern of this. Let's go on to verse four. And the Lord have sent unto you all his servants and prophets, rising early and sending them, but ye have not hearkened, nor inclined your ear to hear. You see, that's just like today. The Most High is about to cast judgment on a bunch of people. His judgments are already on the earth. And he's got his brothers out there. He's got his prophets out there hearkening and, and giving you these words. But you guys are not hearkening. But let's go on. Verse 5. They said, Turn ye again, now every one from his evil way, and from the evil of your doings, and dwell in the land of the Lord. Shalakia. Let's, I'm going to reread that. They said, Turn ye again, now every one from his evil way, and from the evil of your doings, and dwell in the land that the Lord hath given unto you and to your fathers forever and ever. So he's allowing, he's telling you, turn from your ways, repent, come back, and live in the land that your fathers were given. So let's go to verse 6 And go not after other gods To serve them And to worship them 
and to provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands and I will do no and I will do you no hurt the most high is asking us not to do these things not to worship other gods not to go in the ways of the heathens during this time Judah was doing a lot of wicked things they were committing idolatry they were committing all types of wicked pagan acts and the most high is mentioning this to them so why you know why would he tell us not to worship other gods why would he tell us not to provoke him to anger you know because the Most High knows that he can destroy us in the blink of an eye. But let's see how we went off, right? This is verse 6. Um, in fact, let's go to Exodus chapter 20. And we're going to start at verse 2. And it says, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or likenesses of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God. So we see that the Most High is a jealous God and he doesn't want to share his worship and attention with these other gods or these fraudulent gods. And we have a covenant with the Most High. So we're, we are breaking the law when we're doing these things and he has the right to judge us. He has the right to be angry and he has the right to put us to death when we break these laws. Let's go on to uh, verse 7 back in Jeremiah 25. Yet ye have not hearkened unto me, saith the Lord, that ye might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. So the works of your hands is making those graven images. Even not only then, but even today, a lot of our northern kingdom brothers and sisters, they have all these little saints in their house, these little candles, the incense and all that's going for these little statues that they have. These are graven images. The Most High is not happy with those things. And if you're doing those things, these warnings apply to you. So we need to pay attention to these things. Right? So let's go on. Verse 8. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, because ye have not heard my words, behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon, my servant. Hold on a second. We know Nebuchadnezzar is not a Hebrew Israelite, but the Most High called him his servant because the Most High can put anybody in power and use them to do his service. So that is his servant. And at the time, Nebuchadnezzar was the most powerful king around. So he is calling him his servant here. He says, And Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land and against the inhabitants thereof, and against all these nations round about, and will utterly destroy them, and make them an astonishment, and a hissing, and a perpetual desolation. So the Most High is going to use Nebuchadnezzar to cast out his judgments upon these people. These, you know, when, when the Most High puts judgment on you, he's definitely going to send your enemies against you. And he's going to give them the win to come over you. In fact, let's, um, let me see here. You know what? This is concerning Judah being conquered by Nebuchadnezzar right so let's go to second kings because it's a little more detail second kings 24 verse 10 and we'll go from 10 to 16 it says hold on 10 10 to 16 at that time the servants of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came up against Jerusalem and the city was besieged 
And Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came against the city and his servants did besiege it. And Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, went out to the king of Babylon. He and his mother and his servants and his princes and his officers. And the king of Babylon took him in the eighth year of his reign. And he carried out thence all the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house and cut in pieces all the vessels of gold which Solomon, king of Israel, had made in the temple of the Lord as the Lord had said. And he carried away all Jerusalem and all the princes and all the mighty men of, the val of valor, even 10,000 captives and all the craftsmen and the smiths, none remained save the poorest sort of people of the land. And he carried away Jehoiakim to Babylon and the king's mother and the king's wives and his officers and the mighty of the land. Those carried he into captivity from Jerusalem to Babylon. And in all the men of might, even 7,000, and craftsmen and smiths, a thousand, and all that were strong and apt for war, even them the king of Babylon brought captive to Babylon. So we see that the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, the most high cast judgment upon Judah, after warning them Judah didn't listen like a lot of our people today don't listen and the Most High sent his judgment against them right so now we're gonna go back to and because he cast his judgment against them the king of Judah and Judah lost everything the only thing that was left behind in Judah were the poorest of the poor because they had the Nebuchadnezzar had no use of them if you notice, it said he took all the princes the, and, and the and the and the and the people with all the skills and the mighty and the mighty men for war. Anyone who was useful to the, to Babylon, he took. So let's go back to Jeremiah twenty-five, and we're gonna go to verse ten, I believe. Right now, let's let's reread verse nine, knowing what we just read in Second Kings. Right. Behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord, Nebu and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations round about and will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and a hissing and a perpetual desolation. So he left Jerusalem desolated. Verse 10. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the bride, sound of the millstones and the light of the candles. So what he's saying there is Judah obviously was just living their lives like normal, right? They were happy. They were celebrating things. They were doing normal things. When this judgment came upon them So let's go on to 11 And this whole land shall be desolate Be a desolation And an astonishment And these nations Shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years And it shall come to pass When 70 years are accomplished That I will punish the king of Babylon So you see Judah went into captivity as punishment But after this is over The Most High will punish those Who punished our people That he used So let's go on Verse 12 And it shall come to pass When the 70 years are accomplished That I will punish the king of Babylon And, the, and that nation saith the Lord For their iniquity And the land of the Chaldeans And will make it a perpetual desolation so the way they desolated Judah, our land, they're going to be desolated the same way. And, you know, the Most High will bring their enemies against them and give them a win over them. Verse 13. And I will bring upon that land all my words which I pronounced against it, even all that is written in this book, which Jeremiah hath prophesied against all the nations. 
What we have to realize is that not only is Jeremiah prophesying against these nations then, these prophecies also apply today against these nations today and against our people today. So we have to really pay mind to this. It says, for many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also. And I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. So depending on the treatment that these nations gave upon our people, the Most High is going to give it back to them the same way. Let's go to 15. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel unto me, take the wine cup of this fury at my hand and cause all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it. What you have to realize is this is not a party. When he's saying drink this from this wine cup, this cup is judgment. And whatever judgment he has in that cup, that's what you're going to drink. That's what's going to come upon you. So let's go to 16 and they shall drink and be moved and be mad because of the sword that I will send among them. So their judgment is the sword among going to be sent amongst them, which means they're going to be killed. 17. Then took I the cup at the Lord's hand and made all the nations to drink unto whom the Lord had sent me to wit Jerusalem and the cities of Judah. And the kings thereof, and the princes thereof, to make them a desolation, an astonishment, and hissing, and a curse, as it is this day. So before the Most High put judgment on these other nations, then and now, he will judge his people first. And we will receive our recompense for our wickedness. And if we're righteous, we will get recompense for righteousness. But in this case, Judah received a very negative judgment. So we'll go on. So astonishment and hissing and curse as it is to this day. Pharaoh, king of Egypt and his servants and his princes and all his people and all the mingled people and all the kings of the land of Uz. And all the kings of the land of the Philistines, and Ashkelon, and Aza, and Ekron, and the remnant of Ashdod, Edom, and Moab, and the children of Ammon, and all the kings of Tyrus, and all the kings of Zidon, and all and the kings of the isles which are beyond the sea. If you notice, the Most High is very thorough. On how many kingdoms and nations are going to drink from this cup. And that also shows you how many of these nations had us in captivity and did things to us. Verse 23. Dedan, Tima, and Buzz, and all that are on in the utmost corners. And all the kings of Arabia. And all the kings of the mingled people that dwell in the desert. And all the kings of Zermary. And all the kings of Elam, and all the kings of the Medes, and all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another in all the kingdoms of the world. You see that? All the kingdoms of the world. That's going to be then and now in this future present time, which are upon the face of the earth, and the king of Shishak shall drink after them. Therefore, Thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Drink ye, and be drunken, and spew, and fall, and rise no more, because of the sword which I shall, because of the sword which I will send among you. You see that? The Most High is sending out a sword to them. So that means destruction for them, desolation for them. The same way they did to Judah, the same way they're going to get too. And the same way how they did to us in modern times, the same way it's going to happen to them in modern times. Let's go to verse 28. And it shall be, if they refuse to take the cup of thy hand to drink, then shalt thy say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, 
ye shall certainly drink. For lo, I begin to bring evil on the city which is called by my name. And should ye be utterly unpunished? What he's saying is, he brought judgment to his own city and his own people first. And if he punished them, are these other people not going to be punished? They're going to get theirs. Uh, in fact, you know what? Let's, um, let's go to Revelation. I want to say Revelation 16, right? Because it's talking about the cup, the punishment, the judgments. So let's look at Revelation 16. Yep, let's go right here. Revelation 16, verse 19. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. The Most High may let a lot of time go by, but he's not going to forget that he's going to judge you You're going to get that judgment So even Babylon the Great Back then received their judgment But also This is the book of Revelations Babylon the Great Here in the present And in the future will receive that same judgment They're going to get that cup Whether they like it or not In fact How is he going to put this judgment out Upon these nations And upon Babylon Right? If we go to Psalms, right? Let's see here. Psalms, what is that? 78 49. Psalm 78 49. This is how he puts out his judgment upon the nations and upon the kingdoms and upon individual people also. It says, he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. So we see that he sent evil angels to put out his judgment upon these people, upon these kingdoms, all upon the earth. Let's go back here to, I believe we were at verse 28 of chapter 25 in Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah. And I'll reread verse 28. And it shall be if they refuse to take the cup of thy hand to drink, then shalt thou say unto them, thus saith the Lord of hosts, ye shall certainly drink. For lo, I begin to bring evil on the city which is called by my name, and should ye be utterly unpunished? Ye shall not be unpunished, for I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth, saith the Lord of hosts. Wow, that is a heavy judgment for all these nations and these kingdoms to carry. The Most High is calling judgment the sword to come upon them which means ruination desolation destruction death let's go to verse 30 therefore prophesy thou against them all these words and say unto them the lord shall roar from on high and utter his voice from his holy habitation he shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout as they that tread the grapes against the inhabitants of the earth. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth. For the Lord have controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh. He will give them that are wicked to the sword saith the Lord wow so we see when he says he's going to plead with all flesh that is not a humble meek thing that's that's destruction what he's saying is he's coming to you with the sword and he's going to put you to death 
Let's go to um, what is this? Uh, that was thirty-one. Let's go to Isaiah sixty-six, verse sixteen. I think it's sixteen. Hold on a second. Isaiah sixty-six, sixteen. It says, "Look at this. This is a future prophecy for these nations and for these people." Look at this. Isaiah 66 verse 16. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. You hear that? The slain of the Lord shall be many. When he comes, he's not coming out to give out hugs and kisses. He's not here to give out purple stars, right? And candy. He is coming for war against these nations and wicked people. And this includes some of our people that are rebelling and not hearkening against, uh, hearkening to his word. We need to wake up to this because this is going to be a reality soon enough. If we look around the world the way things are going and we don't see these prophecies coming through where these judgments are already happening. Then there's a problem with the individual not seeing it or believing it. You know, it's 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 gonna it's coming, whether we like it or not. So let's go back to verse 31 in chapter 25 of Jeremiah. And I'll reread that. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord has a controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh, he will give them that are wicked to the sword, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. This evil that's going to go from nation to nation, he's talking about destruction, he's talking about judgment upon these nations, these people. And who's who can stop the Most High from doing this? These military forces they're getting themselves ready to go hide. They ain't trying to fight. They, if they think they're going to beat Yahawasha or Yahawah in a straight up conflict, they are sadly, sadly mistaken. But let's go on to verse 33. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered nor buried. They shall be as dung upon the ground. So basically, these people that are judged and killed from one end of the earth to the other, their bodies will lay out on the ground. Nobody's going to care or cry over them. Nobody's going to gather their bodies up and bury them. They're just going to lay upon the ground like manure. Like you walk down the street and you got to step over a pile of dog poo. That's how their bodies are going to be, but everywhere. We don't want to be a pile of dog poo. I would suggest we hearken to the Most High's words. Repent. Do what he says. Let's go on to verse 34. It says, How ye shepherds and cry and wallow yourselves in the ashes, ye principal of the flock. For the days of your slaughter and your dispersions are accomplished. Now, when he's talking about the shepherds and the principal of the flock he's talking about these leaders that are not only world leaders but in many cases leaders in our communities and leaders and pastors in our little churches that are leading us in the wrong direction right so let's go on verse 35 well no no let's go to 34 and read that how ye shepherds and cry and wallow yourselves in the ashes and ye principle of the flock he's telling them to go into mourning because this is what's going to happen to them for the days of your slaughter and your dispersion are accomplished so the judgment has already been cast for them and ye shall fall like a pleasant vessel so in other words they're going to fall like a fragile vase and they're going to be broken and the shepherds shall have Shalakia, and the shepherds shall have no way to flee, nor the principle of the flock to escape. 
So they're not going to be able to hide or get away with any of this. They can't hide from these judgments. 36. A voice of the cry of the shepherds and howling of the principal of the flock shall be heard. For the Lord have spoiled their pasture. Their, their, their cry, their turmoil, their punishment, the pain, the suffering they're going to go through is going to be so crazy that you're going to hear them. The Most High will hear these cries and their wailing in the streets. And the peaceable habitation are cut down because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Verse 38. He has forsaken his covert as the lion. Shalakia, hold on a second. I believe I want to see if I... Let me finish this and then we'll go to that one. He has forsaken his covert as the lion. For their hand, their land is desolate because of the fierceness of the oppressor. And because of his fierce anger. So he is going to desolate their pasturage. He's going to desolate their, their resources. Their, everything they have. He's going to strip it from them. He's going to be like a roaring lion in that time. I want to see this same verse. Chapter 25. In the NLT. Because the NLT words it. Amazingly beautifully. And detailed. In a way that you can understand it. So let me just pull that up in a second. Give me one moment. That is 36. All right. So this is Jeremiah 25 in the NLT. And we're going to go from verse 33 and then we'll go down to 38. It says, in that day, those the Lord has Wait, Shalakim. In that day, those the Lord has slaughtered will fill the earth from one end to, other, to the other. No one will mourn for them or gather up their bodies to bury them. They will be scattered on the ground like manure. Weep and moan, you evil shepherds. Roll in the dust, you leaders of the flock. The time of your slaughter has arrived. You will fall. And shatter like a fragile vase You will find no place to hide There will be no way to escape Listen to the frantic cries of the shepherds The leaders of the flock are wailing in despair For the Lord is ruining their pastures Peaceful metals will be turned into a wasteland By the Lord's fierce anger he has left his den like a strong lion seeking its prey and their land will be made desolate by the sword of the enemy and the Lord's fierce anger. You see that? The Most High is not going to have no mercy upon these people, upon these nations, upon these fraudulent leaders that we have in our communities, in our churches. These people are in a lot of trouble, whether they know it or not, whether they believe it or not, doesn't change anything, but it's coming. We're going to go into Jeremiah chapter 26. There's two or three verses I want to read there before we end some of this. I want to go to chapter 26. We'll start at verse two. Thus saith the Lord, stand in the court of the Lord's house. And speak unto the, all the cities of Judah. Now this is the Most High telling Jeremiah to speak unto all of Judah. Which comes to worship in the Lord's house. All the words that I command thee to speak unto thee. Diminish not a word. In other words change no word of it and don't water it down. Verse 3. If so be they will hearken and turn every man from his evil way. That I may repent me of the evil Which I purpose to do unto them Because of the evil of their doings So in other words He's giving us His children Judah Israel 
the opportunity to turn back so that we don't have to suffer these these judgments, these curses, this pain, this suffering, this death that's coming. If we turn around, then we won't receive these things. But we have to repent and return back to the law, statutes and commandments of the Most High. But let's go on. Verse 4. And thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, If ye will not hearken to me, to walk in my law, which I have set before you, to hearken to the words of my servants, the prophets. Now today, back then Jeremiah was the prophet, but today the prophets are those brothers that are standing on the corners crying out loud to you, trying to teach you the ways of the Most High. But you're too busy to listen. You taught, yeah, I believe the Bible and you keep on walking. Or you want to argue about things that are not even in the Bible. We need to pay attention to this because this is serious. Let's go on verse 5. To hearken to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I sent unto you, both rising up early and sending them, but ye have not hearkened. You see that? He sent these brothers out. He sent these prophets out to you, Israel, to blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. He sent them out to you, but you're not listening. And he's warning you. These brothers are out there. These prophets are out there warning you. Just like Jeremiah was warning people. Just like Ezekiel was out there. Just like John was out there. There's always been a pattern of this. Our people do good. They get comfortable. They, they, they start following other nations. And doing all types of evilness. And then the Most High has to come back and plead with you and ask you to return before he slaughters you. We need to wake up. We need to come back home to the Most High. We need to repent and come back to these commandments so that the Most High can return to us and put us in our rightful home. So this is your brother Manatazak from Nation of Kings and Priests. Hopefully this is a very edifying chapter in Jeremiah hopefully it motivates you to do the right thing if you're not doing the right thing so I, I'll talk to you guys on the next one Shalom